In your lifetime, you will work 10,000 days or 80,000 hours at your job. Your career choice is a very important decision. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Carol Schwartz speaking here this evening with students Sherry Sandler, Susan Allen, Carla Glover, and Joe Franzone to present to you a complete update of Norristown Area High School on our show, Eagle Forum. ladies and gentlemen, you will see the Eagle Forum telephone number 630-5097 flashing on your screen. If you have any questions or comments concerning this show, please call us. Call us also if you have any questions or comments about the Norristown Area School District educational facilities. We will be happy to help you. Now we are ready to begin tonight's show with an update of Norristown's activities and Susan's report on American Education Week and Club International. Susan? Thank you, Ms. Schwartz. American Education Week was quite a success at Norristown Area High School this year. An essay contest with the theme, Attaining Academic Excellence at Norristown Area High School, was offered to the students. The first prize for this contest was won by junior student Diane McDermott with honorable mention certificate of merits won by sophomore student Marcy Wynn and juniors Elizabeth Wilson and Kenneth Burke. Also, during American Education Week, students entered a poster contest with the theme Education in Focus. There were two first prize winners of this contest, senior student Manuel Silas and Solomon James. The Future Business Leaders of America Club ran an American Education Student of the Week contest under the direction of student Sari Heitner. Sari has reported that the winners of this contest were in ninth grade, Diana Di Durazio, in 10th grade, the recipient was Karen Gresh, in 11th grade, Kara Plonsky, and the winner in 12th grade was Tangi James. And now for Club International. Club International consists of students who are interested in foreign languages and different cultures. The club is sponsored by Ms. Rock and its 83-84 officers are Sue Husted, President, Paul Wismer, Vice President, Susan Allen, Second Vice President, Sandy Benz, Secretary, and Margaret then Treasurer. The club has had a candy sale, various holiday parties, and a dinner for the exchange students. A very important event on the club's calendar is their annual trip to the Amish country. On this cultural journey to learn more about the American and Pennsylvania Dutch way of life, the members of this club will be joined by the foreign students. This tour of Lancaster and surrounding communities is just one of the events that Club International has to offer. Thank you, Susan. Continuing our activities report to you is Sherry's Drama Club report and update of FBLA. Sherry? Thank you, Ms. Schwartz. The Drama Club, organized and directed by Rosemary Zumo of the High School English Department, is responsible for three plays during the school year. The opening production of the year is produced in the format of a dinner theater. By transforming the cafeteria into a cabaret theater, the club has produced such shows as Godspell, Starting Here, Starting Now, and most recently, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. The spring musical at Norristown Area High School has also become the responsibility of the Drama Club. All students, members or not, are encouraged to participate in this production. In addition to acting, set building and painting, lighting, sound, props, and makeup are all important areas. In fact, without these technical areas, a play can seem very flat. The spring musical also requires publicity people to sell the show to the public. One of the most important areas is the pit orchestra that provides the music. While this year's show has not been selected, some past shows have been Hello Dolly, Fiddler on the Roof, and How to Succeed in Business Without Really, without really Trying. A children's play is the last production of the year. Produced in late spring in cooperation with the Barn Playhouse in Jeffersonville, this show gives the Drama Club students the opportunity to perform for a completely different type of audience in a totally different environment. 
Matinees are held for local school children at a very nominal fee at the barn. Past productions which have been very popular with the children and their teachers have been Winnie the Pooh and Mr. Invisible Dragon. In addition to the regularly scheduled production, Drama Club members have provided entertainment at other, school distri at other district schools and for organizations such as the Norristown Teachers Club. This year, the club presented a Reader's Theater Productions of Dickens, A Christmas Carol, for the Norristown Teachers Club Holiday Tea. Current Drama Club members include Jane Burt, Liz Contafio, Tim Crawford, Steve Evans, Manuel Silas, Nancy Barone, Andre Wills, Jim Foley, Amy Sales, Rob Replogel, Debbie Lindemann, Emily Lind, Scott Shapiro, Drew and Jill Lehman, Britta Iskin, and Jim Rettling. And now for the FBLA update. The Future Business Leaders of America Club here at Norristown reports they are keeping themselves very busy these past few months. The American Free Enterprise System is one of their focus points this year. This project has inspired them to produce a series of three television teaching shows on this system being aired over the cable television channel. The first show strives to give the viewer some background information. The second tells of success stories in America, while the final show gives proof positive in backing up free enterprise against its critics. Three well done television shows for the benefit of our community. The opening of the new Catherine Gibbs School was a big event for our FBLAers. The chapter received an invitation to attend the, the grand opening and did so with much enthusiasm. They experimented with, the numerous, with numerous computers, toured the lavish facilities, and enjoyed a relaxed reception. A field trip for all to enjoy. Just before Christmas, a group of FBLAers presented a Christmas show at the Norristown State Hospital. The show included Santa, Mrs. Claus, Rudolph, and many elves who sang and read to a group of 75 patients. Candy canes were handed out and good cheer filled the room, as well as the hearts of our members. A big thank you to Vice President Amy Golden for writing, preparing, and organizing the show. FBLA, in the hopes of making the season, the season more enjoyable for everyone, conducted a canned food drive for the dogs and cats in our own local SPCA. They realized that everyone should be happy this holiday season. The Norristown Future Business Leaders of America will be hosting the Spring Regional at Norristown High School in March. The planning for this is very demanding, but a successful workshop is sure to result. Thank you, Sherry. Moving right along now, Carla has a report on the Explorers Club as well as Norristown's indoor track team. Carla? Thank you. Exploring is a program for teens and young adults ages 14 through 21 years, which allows students to meet, compete, and share ideas with their peers. The advisor of this club at Norristown Area High School is Mr. Bernie Linarello. The program, which is sponsored by the Boy Scouts of America, groups young people by their hobby or occupational interests. Our group at Norristown is an outdoor adventure group which enjoys any outdoor activities. The Post, which is one of the largest in the Valley Forge Council, has been recognized as the outstanding post for 1982-83 for their activities, council involvement, and service projects that the students completed. Club members hope to repeat this again for the 1983-84 year. Members have also shown their high competitive spirit by taking second place twice at the local council's Olympics and sending several members to last year's National Olympics where they all received medals, something our school board recognized with letters of commendation. Some of the other activities that the Post have participated in are the Valley Forge Council's Big E Weekend at Camp Delmont and the Valley Forge Council Winter Carnival Weekend. Also, members of our post were volunteers at the Jerry Lewis Muscular Dystrophy Telethon by answering the telephones, as well as participating in the Valley Forge Council Bowlathon fundraiser. Norristown's Explorers Club is now planning a multi-day canoe trip down the Delaware, a camping trip in the mountains, survivalist style with no shelters, prepared food, equipment, and a whitewater rafting trip this spring on the Lehigh River. Most of the members are also looking forward to the National Explorer Conference, which will be held at Ohio State University next summer. And now for the indoor track team. Norristown Area High School's indoor track team for 1983-84 has some outstanding members. Paul Close, Glenn Butler, Dave Roseboro, and Pompey Wellens won third place medals at Haverford College in the Spirit Medley. 
In addition, Deborah Manning set the school record in the 300 yard and Michelle Seaman set the school record in the shot put. On December 22, several, mem several team members re represented Norristown at Lehigh University. Pompey Wellens, Paul Close, Dave Roseboro, Glenn Butler, Carlos Brown, Deborah Manning, and Gregory Reinhardt. The girls track team, under the coaching of Joe Hadrick, is just as active as the boys. On December 28, 1983, the following traveled to Haverford College. Sean Wright, Deborah Manning, Michelle Seaman, Sharon Waddington, and Angela Thomas. Furthermore, St. Joe's University hosted members of the boys track team along with Norristown Area High School's coach, Larry Simmons. <laughs> Fact, Montgomery County is named for General Richard Montgomery, an Irish-born Revolutionary War and military leader, and raised its own flag for the first time on September 10, 1934. Fact, of the 67 counties in the state of Pennsylvania, Montgomery County is the third most populated in the Commonwealth. Fact, in case of inclement weather, our emergency school number for North Center is 304 and will be announced on local radio stations. You have just heard from Joe Franzone, Eagle Forum's fact man, who from time to time feels that he has to interrupt our show. Sherry, are you now ready with your report on National Honor Society and girls swimming and diving team? Yes, I am. Okay, take it away, Sherry. The National Honor Society has 15 members who have been busy since September with a number of projects. The first event, which was the kickoff for the entire year, was the sale of chrysanthemums for the homecoming football game. Their next event was the organization of a parade of cars on Thanksgiving morning for the final football game at Upper Marion. The most recent event involved hosting 91 juniors and senior students from 19 Montgomery County high schools for a meeting of the Student Forum, which is an instrument for students to exchange ideas. This event generated so much interest and enthusiasm that many want to attend the next Student Forum at Souderton. An ongoing project is the organization of a slide presentation to be used for orientation and publicity for Norristown Area High School. National Honor Society's big fundraiser will begin this month. The members will take orders for the New York Times and the cost will be 25 cents daily, while the regular newsstand price is 60 cents. There are curriculum guides for teacher classroom use, and for students there are current events, sports, and other interesting articles. The hope is that this will be an ongoing project which will be beneficial to the entire Norristown Area High School community of students and staff. The Norristown girls swimming and diving team, under the fine coaching of Karen Rohrbach, has gotten off to a fantastic start. They have beaten Cheltenham and Perkiomen Valley, and they tied Plymouth White Marsh. Four notables are freshman Sue Lothert, sophomore Kristen Dressel, junior Dina Brown, and senior Mary Barone. Sue has qualified for districts in the 100-yard backstroke. Kristen is winning the 200-yard IM and 100-yard breaststroke. Dina has qualified for districts in diving, and Mary is consistently winning the 200-yard freestyle and the 500-yard freestyle. On December 27, the girls participated in a swim-a-thon for the benefit of the team, boosting their spirit and ambitions. Thank you, Sherry. And now on to Susan with a report on Norristown Area High School's choirs and our girls' basketball team. Susan? Thank you, Ms. Schwartz. The choirs at Norristown Area High School are comprised of 81 students, in grades 9 through 12. Pops Ensemble is a newly formed group this year of ninth grade students which prepares them for singing in either concert choir or new generation singers. Concert choir performs music from various periods in music history whereas new generation singers specialize in contemporary gospel and pop. All choirs are involved in concerts throughout the year. The annual winter, winter concert was presented in December with each choir singing separate numbers as well as combining for a mass choir presentation. The choirs will be presenting a concert at the middle schools in late January in order to interest more students in choir at the high school. On March 9th, the choirs have been asked to sing at the student loan concert in conjunction with the band and orchestra at the high school. 
and will be presenting a spring concert of their own in May. In addition to the concerts mentioned, the choirs have also sung for community functions and at other schools in the district. A Christmas candle sale was recently finished to help purchase badly needed choir gowns for each of the choirs. Members attended an open rehearsal of Bach's B minor mass at Chestnut Hill and are planning to attend the District 11 Choir Festival in February, which is made up of highly auditioned students in southeastern south Pennsylvania. Three of our students were selected to represent Narstown at this festival. They are Andre Willis, John Lyons, and Richard Neff. The choirs will be singing at the baccalaureate service in June this year for the first time. And now for girls basketball. This year's girls basketball team at Narstown is presently rebuilding their strength. There are three sophomores in the starting lineup, along with seniors Mary Hall and Chante Jackson. Mary Hall is the lead scorer with a 15-point average. Sophomore Chris Shesnick is showing her talents in rebounding, leading the team with 10 points per contest. Other members of the girls' basketball team include seniors Karen Davis, Lisa Marshall, Lisa Rote, Felicia Hughes, and Donza Johnson, along with the junior members Beth DiCicco and Dee Benny. Good luck from the Eagle Forum for a great season. <laughs> Fact. In the Narstown Area High School seal, there is an acorn which serves as a background for the beehive, the key of knowledge, and the winged foot of Mercury. Fact. The health suite at Narstown Area High School is open during school hours for the care of accidents and illnesses that occur during school hours. Fact. The collection of books at the Narstown Area High School Library numbers over 15,000. But there is also available space for 31,500 books. Also, our library subscribes to 100 magazines and several newspapers, all for use by our students. <laughs> Joe seems to be full of facts this evening. Thank you. Now, here's Carla speaking on the philosophy of education at Norristown, as well as an announcement of an important financial aid seminar, seminar that will be held at our school. Carla? Thank you, Ms. Schwartz. It is the philosophy and major objective of Norristown Area High School to provide an educational program which will satisfy the needs of each student. To meet that objective, we offer a selection of programs and a choice of elective subjects. Further, we strive to create a learning atmosphere which is friendly, dignified, and purposeful. There are two modes of instruction that are provided for various courses in social studies, mathematics, science, business, and home economics. The two modes are group-paced and individualized. A group-paced course is offered to a group of the students who select the course. Instruction usually focuses on teacher presentation and student response. Usually, students accomplish the objectives of the course at a pace set by the teacher. An ILS, or Individualized Learning System, course allows students to work at a pace which is suitable to them. The ILS method encourages greater responsibility on the part of the students for their own learning. For the students who select the ILS mode, a course may be completed in one year, less than a year, or in more than a year, depending on the individual's needs and or abilities. It is to be noted that although the students proceed at an individual rate of learning through a course, they are expected to meet the standards of academic achievement determined for the course. And now for the financial aid seminar. The Norristown Area High School Guidance Department is sponsoring a financial aid seminar for all seniors and their parents. This seminar will cover the explanation of the Pennsylvania Higher Education of Academic Assistance Program, as well as the Narstown Area School District Student Loan Fund, financial aid forms, government student loans, Pell Grant, and many more. The seminar will be held on Thursday, January 19, 1984, at 7.30 p.m. in the Narstown Area High School Auditorium. The guidance department has arranged for several guest speakers for the evening. Mr. Peter Yazincheck of FIA will be speaking on the hows, whys, and whens of properly applying to the Pennsylvania Higher Education of Academic Assistance for Loans. Also, another guest speaker, 
of the evening will be Mr. Rich McQuillan of Ursinus College speaking on the topic of packaging. Mr. McQuillan will be going over work study on campus programs, student loans, and institutional grants. We of the Eagle Forum believe that all seniors and parents will want to attend. So remember, financial aid seminar, Thursday, January 19, 1984, 7.30 p.m. in the Norristown Area High School Auditorium. See you there. This year, Norristown Area High School had a new offering entitled Diversified Occupations Orientation and Co-op Program for our students, on which Susan will now report. Susan? Thank you. There's a new program this year at Norristown Area High School entitled Diversified Occupations and is under the capable leadership of Robert Neff of the Business Education Department. The program includes a supervised on-the-job work experience allowing students to gain actual work experience in fields other than marketing and business. A requirement for the senior students that are enrolled in this program is a course called Diversified Occupations Orientation which emphasizes job problems, employer-employee relations, and career plans. Through self-awareness and career research techniques, the student should leave the course with a more realistic picture of himself or herself in relation to the world of work. At the present time, Mr. Neff reports to us that he has 22 students in the program. Keisha Jones and Royce Zuber are working at Bamberger's, Keisha as a sales clerk and Royce in, in the maintenance department. General Building Services has employed Jacinda Matthews and Ricky Waldrop who work with a crew and do office cleaning. Thelma Butler has been employed by Suburban General Hospital as work and is working in the dietary department. Another diversified occupation student, Tom Mioli, has become a shift cook at McDonald's and is now training people to become cooks at McDonald's. Timothy Tague has been employed at Montgomery Hospital in the dietary department and is a supervisor of the snack bar. Another student, Andrew Venezia, has been hired by Hall & Company and is the shop foreman, which includes the supervising of four mechanics also employed there. One can readily see that this program has been very successful in making our students productive members of our society and community. Norristown Area High School is very proud of the members of the Diversified Occupations Program and equally proud of the, facts that, the fact that we are able to offer this worthwhile learning experience to our students. And if any of you local business people have jobs available, be, be sure to call the Business Education Department at the high school. Thank you, Susan. On to Carla now with an eye-opening report on job availability. Carla? Thank you. At the beginning of this show, you heard Ms. Schwartz report to you that in your lifetime you will work 10,000 days or 80,000 hours at your job. So your career choice is a very important decision. The National Commission on Office Occupations reports to us that there are 305,000 annual job openings through 1990 in the secretarial and stenography areas, which is the number one field. Job seekers with training in these areas will find numerous positions open to them. The number two field is bookkeeping workers, in which the job openings through 1990 is 96,000 a year. There are high replacement needs for bookkeepers as well as numerous job opportunities. Accountants are needed at the rate of 61,000 a year through 1990. Employment as an accountant is expected to increase as more and more managers rely on accounting information to make business decisions. Therefore, people with accounting training are in high demand. As business expansion produces more paperwork, the job market requires more typists. According to the National Commission on Office Occupations, there are 59,000 additional typists needed annually through 1990 and the typist who can handle a variety of office duties is in greater demand. Through 1990, employment is expected to grow quickly as business and professional services expand. Therefore, businesses need receptionists. As a matter of fact, businesses need receptionists at the rate of 41,000 yearly. And of course, business expansion also creates a need for better record keeping. So, job seekers with typing and other office skills will have the best opportunities. Fact. 
In order to participate in interscholastic sports at Narsten Area High School, a student must meet certain criteria. They have been established as scholastic standing, ability, desire, cooperation, good attitude, physical condition, knowledge of activity, service, attendance, and spirit. Fact, Damlin of National Honor Society is a flaming torch set in a keystone of letters CSLS inscribed. These letters signify the ideals of the Honor Society, character, scholarship, leadership, and service. Fact, in order to achieve academic excellence in our scenario high school, we have adopted a more demanding grade system. 93 to 100A, 85 to 92B, 78 to 84C, 70 to 77D, 0 to 69F. Well, thank you, Joe. You're really doing a great job this evening. The guidance department at Norristown is most important for our students, and here is Sherry with a report on their services. Sherry? Thank you, Ms. Schwartz. There are many guidance services available at Norristown Area High School. I am going to try to cover some of them this evening. Our library has a career resource room, which has many aids to assist students in making career decisions. The GIS, or Guidance Information System, is a computer service and offers information on two or four year colleges, as well as various occupations and financial aid data. The Guidance Department pre prepares college bulletins twice a month containing the latest information on financial aid, scholarships, and college visitations to our school. Also, the Guidance Conference Room maintains a file on all scholarships cross-referenced by school and type. This is available for usage by any of our students. For the last 12 years, Norristown has been involved in arranging an annual college night program. Each year, there are well over 100 colleges, universities, technical schools, as well as military personnel representatives at this program. Any junior or senior student at Norristown is prepared by the counselor to visit a variety of school representatives and obtain the necessary information for making a wise choice for post-secondary schooling. By the way, freshmen and sophomores are also invited to begin gathering information. Information concerning the ACTs, or American College Testing, may be obtained from the Counseling Department at Norristown. The, the ACT is a four-part examination which reflects achievement in English, science, social studies, and mathematics. Any student who plans to apply to a college or university in the southeastern United States or west of the Mississippi should plan to register for the ACT. The PSAT, or Preliminary Scholastic Aptitude Test, is recommended to be taken by all junior students who are planning a formal education after high school. Also, this examination is the test that is used in determining the semi-finalists for the National Merit Scholarships. The Scholastic Aptitude Test, or SAT, is a two and a half hour multiple choice test that measures developed verbal and mathematical reasoning of abilities that are related to successful performance in college. This test is used to supplement the secondary school record and other information about the student in assessing readiness, in assessing readiness for college level work. The last service that I'm going to cover, offered by the Guidance Department of Norristown Area High School, is arranging visitations from the various recruiters of our armed services. All branches of our armed services have excellent training programs which relate to, our, to the world of work. Also, this month, January, the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery is given to any junior or senior student on a voluntary basis. <laughs> Final fact. To qualify for graduation at Narston Area High School, a student must complete four years of social studies, four years of English, two years of science, two years of mathematics, four years of physical education, two years of health education, in order to total 220 credits. Thank you, 
Joe. Attention parents of children now attending private or parochial schools. Surely this evening you have discovered some of the reasons why Norristown Area High School presently has four National Merit Scholarship Honorable Mentions and holds the Future Business Leaders of America National First Prize in Achievement in Business Advocacy, as well as several of the finest athletes in the state, including a top track star, Pompey Wellens, and a potential Olympic figures ice skater, Billy Brennan. This combination simply means that academic excellence always prevails at Norristown Area High School. Good evening from the Eagle Forum team of Susan Allen, Sherry Sandler, Carla Glover, and Joe Franzen. Thank you for joining us.